Okay, welcome everyone. This is the August market update from Rosecuts. I'm joined by Mike as ever. How are you, Mike? Hi, Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Uh, good, good to chat. Yeah, been uh, a relatively quiet summer to be honest, but um, markets are looking quite healthy. It's been a very quiet summer. Volumes, if I look at the US, are uh, are down uh, not just on. Uh, averages for the rest of the year, but also compared to other summers. So things are very, very quiet. Notwithstanding that, most of the, the headline indices in the States are pushing new highs. We're just kind of slowly grinding higher almost every day. Um, the S&P again last night hitting a, an all-time high. The background is, I think, pretty supportive. Growth and the pace of growth in the US and Europe is strong. The earnings season has been decent. There's not been many major earnings, I think, that have really moved prices. But uh, again, at the same time, no no nasty surprises. And I think the market is in the mood to look beyond a whole range of, of mounting real world risks. COVID, the, the uh, passage of the Delta uh, virus, not just in the developed world, but the developing world. Also, I think the, the inflation debate which we've talked about, has receded somewhat. Yields in the US, uh, Treasury yields in the US hit uh, lows about a month ago uh, and are now pushing up towards the, the average of the year. And I think there's still the view in the market that, that inflation pressures are transitory, that this is just a function of the, uh, of the reopening. Um, we have had sort of corrections of sorts in the last month or so. Uh, small caps in the US corrected by 7 or 8%. It's rebounded somewhat. And one area I think that's been quite weak is emerging markets. Partly, I guess, because they don't have the, the steam of central bank asset buying. In, in fact, uh, 50% of emerging market central banks have actually been raising rates, notably Brazil raised rates by a full 1% recently. So it's a somewhat different different outlook, I guess, for the uh, the emerging countries, which may in turn throw up some, some opportunities. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see that the emerging market equity ETF that we hold within portfolios has actually been a real laggard this year. I think it's about flat uh, year to date. Now, recently, there's been a few things holding it back. Uh, China's done uh, a bit of a crackdown, particularly on education technology companies, and and that's um, received a few headlines. Also, we're seeing cases of COVID picking up again in China. There's a headline out today about a potential uh, shutdown of one of the important uh, ports, uh, which could again impact on supply chains. But it doesn't look as bad as 2020 yet. What is uh, quite interesting as well, when we talk about low volatility, is there's no volatility in the FX markets in Asia, uh, which, is, which is a positive thing, uh, but also quite surprising. There'll probably be a point where we want to allocate a bit more to emerging markets, and I don't think it's yet, um, but it could be interesting to see if, uh, if the Chinese authorities start putting a lot more stimulus out there and, and start easing or making monetary policy more accommodative and, and yeah. that might actually be the cue. I think so because they, they have uh, perhaps unwittingly um, I think so a degree of distrust in Chinese equities on the part of international investors by, by this crackdown and often when they do that they tend to respond with monetary stimulus either changing the, the reserve requirement ratio etc so that that's definitely one to watch for it may lift the whole emerging markets um complex two other points i think worth mentioning you mentioned fx vol is very low at the same time the cousin asset class of fx crypto has been quite strong we've seen good rebounds in ethereum ripple bitcoin uh, so that's one to keep an eye on they seem to have recovered from regulatory related concerns and then the other headline commodity which intrigues me is oil. What's happening in, in the oil market? We've seen calls uh, from the White House for, for OPEC um, to change its production stance following an OPEC meeting. Um, what, what do you think is going on there? Yeah, I heard a couple of interviews this week uh, focusing on the oil market actually and one part of that really got my attention was one uh, hedge fund manager saying that he thinks we're going to see $100 on oil this year, uh, which would be really surprising, uh, especially when you consider how the price of oil went into negative territory last year. 
uh, both at whole cases based upon the, um, the restrictions to supply in the US that the Biden administration brought in and demand coming back faster than everyone expected. And so you've got a bit of a supply demand imbalance there. Yeah, as a, as a result of that, the White House came out just yesterday and, and suggested that OPEC should be increasing production uh, so we don't risk damaging the economic recovery. And um, it, it's one to keep an eye on because that could, again, start pushing inflation expectations back up, uh, even though you know they've been relaxed over the past six months now almost. Um, but it's, it's a risk that we need to monitor. Yeah, yeah, good. So I guess to conclude, um, pretty pretty quiet uh, outlook. Risks are out there. Markets are probably calibrating them as not being directly relevant. We are in a very low vol environment, so that that's all, all, always to my mind um, flags the need just to, to think about buying protection from time to time. But uh, sort of steady she goes for the moment, I guess. Yeah, I think that's a good summary. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys.